Hello everybody, welcome back. Welcome finally back to go to hydroponics. We're all here in lovely Wisconsin, of course. It is July, almost 4th now. And yeah, I've a lot of things going on. Well, anyways, I finally got my systems done. I didn't end up doing three systems. As you see before, behind me, I ended up doing just two systems, but that was enough. So I'm gonna go over that and tell you guys what I've accomplished with that. So our first system here, just like last year, almost exact same, just a few modifications to make it a little bit better. First one, we have tomatoes here. We have six buckets of tomatoes. They're coming in a dripper line. Um, so let's go over some basic, let's see where the water starts here. So we go over here. I have a, a 32 gallon food grade. It's, I think it's a garbage can. It says an NSF logo on it, which is actually right there. Um, so this is my reservoir right here. Big old, big old container. I have usually 22 gallons of water in here. Same with the other one. I got a pump that comes up, feeds two feeder lines right here of water pressure. The pump down here has a valve for either mixing or draining. As you see, I have an air pump in here as well. Each one has six air stones to keep this thing fully aerated at all times. That pipe down there is the one I fell off. I kind of lost that one, so I replaced it. So in other words, I gotta pull that one out and I'll be fine. So I marked every single gallon on the side of this bucket over here. It's kind of hard to tell in there, but I, so what I did is I took a gallon jug, filled up the entire system. I did a gallon, marked it, gallon, marked it, gallon, marked it, and I did it all the way to the top. So I have, I think, 30 gallons marked out on each, each one of these drums. So I have my air tubing and my electrical cord go to this box, which is kind of a temporary deal right now. This is just to keep everything waterproof because I had a waterproof box there, but it ended up filling like a pond. And if I would have had my air pumps in there, I probably would have ruined them because it was just literally full of water because it's all clay over here. Nothing really drains. So I got two air pumps. I have a surge strip coming in. I got power that goes to the surge strip, powers the two air pumps and the two water pumps for each one. And then I also have a meter here I'll talk about in a little bit. So this is just a regular plastic storage tote and I have a garbage bag on top just to keep it sealed for now. It's just, remember, just a temporary deal. So back to here, my feeder lines. I got a feeder line here which is your typical, I think it's half inch or three quarter inch drip line, your cheap stuff, your big roll, you buy Menards, Home Depot. And then this, I have a flexible tube that goes to a barbed brass fitting, and then it goes to a big PVC pipe. Now, I'm gonna crawl around the other side here. So this PVC pipe is a, a little better and more structurally sound idea than I did last year. So what I did is I drilled the hole tapped it and I put brass fittings in here. Then the brass fittings, the dripper line comes off of there. So in other words, this is just a big feeder line, that's all it is. And I got brass fitting, some pipe dope or some uh, thread sealant. <coughs> and then I have the dripper line that comes off and then the PVC pipe. Now these do get kind of pricey. I think it was like two and a half dollars a piece. Well then I need six for this system, six for the other system and yeah, you get the drift. So anyways, and then once the goes to the dripper line, comes up here, goes to the little stake and comes out right by my plant. Now that second feeder line comes out over here just to keep the pressure balance. So there's always pressure on this side and there's always pressure from that side. So it keeps an even amount of pressure so the same amount of water flows through these dripper lines at all times. So uh, let's go to the front here. So as you see the water, it's flowing pretty good. I'm trying something a little different this year and we'll see how it works. So the buckets here, of course, it's got a brick inside. We can actually take a peek inside of here, see what the roots are doing. The roots are just starting to poke out. I got a brick in there and I got my PVC pipe. It elbows down, but when it fills up to a certain height, then it all drains back out, drains back down the pipe and back into the reservoir. I got stakes behind here for tomato cages that I yet have to install. And then my tomatoes have definitely perked up a lot. As you see, they're getting, they're pretty healthy. They're not the biggest though. I got some in my garden that look a little bigger, which kind of makes me sad. But I was, I was being kind of slow in getting this out here because I wanted to make two systems and it was a lot more work than I thought it was to make two systems. <laughs> but I did it anyways and I'm pretty happy about it. Um, this is just pea gravel I bought from Menards. Just a cheap bag, like two and a half dollar bag. 
because it's, it's a lot cheaper than using actual hydroponic growing media. Um, so yeah, that's this. This is uh, food grade buckets I bought from Menards. They are wrapped in panda plastic, I believe is what it's called. In other words, it's six mil film that's white on one side, black on the other. And then I just taped it on the bucket, just like I did last year, same with those ones, to keep the sun out. Because if the sun hits a white bucket, you're getting algae. And that's bad. You don't want that. Um, so there's my reservoir. I just got a pipe and an elbow that goes down, drains into it. Cut this out. Cut this out, just ports, drilled some holes. This, I use a Dremel, sliced out a good chunk here. I use stainless steel hinges because I don't want them to rust. So I have myself a lid. And all it is is a little nut and bolt deal. It's pretty simple. Kind of self-explanatory. Um, let's go to my pepper system. So this is my bell pepper system. It's exact. It runs the exact same way as this one. I wanted them identical just because that's the way I wanted to do it. Same, I think it's got the same air pump, same pump, water pump, or close to it at least. Um, yeah, and then I have, so these are my bell pepper plants, looking pretty healthy. They're not bad, let's take a peek inside of here. Oh yeah, we got some roots popping out. Nice healthy white roots that are slowly coming along. I wish these plants to be a little faster. And over here, as you see water, I caught a leak. This dripper hose was spraying across like this. And it was soaking the bucket and is leaking all my water out. I just caught that, which that could have been a bad day. So this is running also nicely. These have bricks in as well to keep them placed down nicely in case the wind comes up or whatever it is. Um, I tried to stick with stainless steel like these hose clamps on the end, which is the same setup as that again. These are stainless steel, it's just they don't rust, and they, don't look, they don't look like crap. This is PVC pipe one inch pvc pipe that i painted put m cap drilled it and i screwed in the barb fitting i didn't even tap it these i did tap these i did not on the end um same with that just regular pvc three inch pvc that i painted just to make it match the base of this um i have it on pavers just to keep it out of the dirt and keep it kind of somewhat pitched so it does drain like it should so now I can go over, so I got my blue lab meter here, my fancy blue lab, which I don't want to soak those probes. So I actually had an issue with this, uh, one of the probe, the pH probe not reading correctly, so I got that warranted, and then I got a replacement. So, where's the sun? So I got it here stuck in my water, um, this is... It's like 1400 parts per million, which is, I don't know, it's kind of... Not exact because the water wasn't pure to begin with, and then I added I had to add a lot of um, pH down because my water is pretty basic. And then, as you see, my pH is at 5.3, which is really low or getting pretty borderline of low. And that's because I just added a bunch in there, and I'm kind of waiting for it to circulate. That's the other thing with the system is you have to add slow because there's a little bit or a gallon that sits in the buckets, and you got to remember that, so you kind of have to account for that. But this, like, when I want to check the pH levels, I come stick this out here, stick it in the water, and I check it out, and I add as needed. It actually works pretty nifty. Pretty satisfied with that meter. Nutrients, I am using Maxi Grow by General Hydroponics. It's cheap, it's powdered, and you can buy a whole bunch of it. It's a very cost-effective product. So I think this whole thing cost me $15, and then I also bought the Bloom as well, which is Maxi, Maxi Bloom, and it's... Just strong stuff. It's pretty well. It works. It works. Works pretty well. I haven't used much of it so far. Um, I was using General Hydroponics pH down. However, they stopped producing this stuff. You can't buy this anywhere. The powdered stuff. You can buy the watered down stuff, which I don't really want because I'd rather just add it in here pure, and then I don't have to pay for the water. But they don't sell this stuff anymore because this stuff was nice and cheap too. They sell pH up but I need pH down, I need acid. So I think I'm gonna find a better solution and use like, go buy some actual acid off of Amazon or something, a strong acid, and then tame it down so I can add it in here. But um, yeah, this is my setup so far. It's working out great. I will try to keep you guys a little more updated now that I have it starting and rolling and everything set it up, everything set up and going. So yeah, bell peppers, should be orange bell peppers and tomatoes. So I'll keep you guys updated with progress and just 
how plants are doing and what I'm noticing about this system. So yeah, stay tuned guys. Let me know what you think. Over and out.